Retro Blasting is a YouTube channel for adult pop culture enthusiasts. Anyone under the age of 13 should only watch this channel with your parents. Retro Blasting is not a children's channel. To those of you out there whose immediate reaction is, hey, Michael shouldn't be interviewing Larry Kinney. He doesn't even like Thundercats. Well, guess what? Retro Blasting is not a monarchy. Retro Blasting is a democracy, and we have a number of people on our crew, and some of them love Thundercats. And guess what? They're the ones doing the interview, so you can't be mad. Roll it. Hi, welcome to Retro Blasting. Uh, my name is Matt Swafford. Um, I am guest hosting our the first in our hopefully long series of um, interviews with legendary voice actors, um, including our special guest, Larry Kinney, uh, that you will know from Silverhawks, from Thundercats, from Tiger Sharks, yeah. uh, from Cocoa Puffs, from uh, Count Chocula, Frankenberry. Jeez, I'm tired. Uh, man, I'm just reading down your, your whole list I here. did all of that? You, you did much more than that. <laughs> um, and he, he was nice enough to, we are here at RetroCon in uh, Greenville, South Carolina. He was nice enough to grant us an interview on the fly. And um, welcome. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Thank you very Absolutely. much. Absolutely. And I'm sorry I shouldn't have kidded around like that because uh, I know that. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't even know what I was going to say. <laughs> well, I was going to say because I know you're a little bit nervous. And then I, so I said, "Don't tell him that." <laughs> anyway. Uh, well, I mean, as we talked about on the way down, I'm a I'm a lifelong voice acting geek. I've, ever since I was a kid, I would I would try to imitate and mimic and, and just I was I remember reading the credits at the end of uh, you know a show like Thundercats and just being like, oh wait, who who did what now? Like, oh. yeah. Um, and it always kind of bothered me that they didn't say like Larry Kinney as Lionel and as you know. Oh, just, the, just the names, not the characters. Yeah, they would yeah. just list your names in like blocks, and it was like, yeah. well, who did who? And it, it, it always kind of fascinated me, like yeah. trying to figure that out. Um, but yeah, just going back all the way, and uh, I'm one of the few um, geeks that I know that just is, is super, I'm like, oh my god, I met Larry Kinney, I met, you know, <laughs> guys like Neil Ross, and they're like, who? Like, like, like. Um, so this is definitely uh, an awesome thing, and um, so we've decided to get into this. But um, well, That was great, that was a lot of fun. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Thanks for coming, and uh, bye. Um, so if you don't mind... Um, I, I, I've listened to some of the interviews that you've done. I don't want to ask you the, how did you get started in the yeah. business and, and yeah. all of the, the stable of questions. Um, not going to ask you anything too hard hitting, but um, like one thing that Michael and I came up with is, is you know, what are your feelings on how voice acting, uh, voice acting training and approaching a performance versus live acting? Good question. Well, uh, Gosh, I never thought about it before. <laughs> um, it's really not that much different. Uh, if you were, if you watch the recording session with voice actors, just voice actors, not, not on camera or anything like that, you'd see that they do a lot of acting. A lot of uh, my my favorite one is this. And for some reason, people tell me I do this all the time. When I'm, you know, <laughs> sort of open. Come to my head. I, Lionel, command it. What's going on here? It, it's pretty. You know, you don't have to walk around a lot, but 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 it is. I guess my point is, when you do voice acting, you're not just standing there talking. You know, if you're good, uh, you have to put some emotion into it, and however that manifests itself differently. Different people, you know. But I, helps kind of help like people that talk with their hands, like they kind of. Sure. It's my responsibility to make sure we're in a secure position here. Have you done a lot of like like actual like like uh, on camera acting or? Anything? Not a lot. Not a lot. I did uh, I did a game show in New York for three years called Bowling for Dollars. The prize includes round trip jet transportation and accommodations at a four star hotel, and our contestant will tour Monaco, the jewel of the Cote d'Azur, and so will the pin pal. Because when that happens, three straight strikes, the bowler b -b -b and the pin pal at home win the same prize, and that happens all the way through the show. Let's add twenty bucks to the jackpot and get started. Make it seven hundred eighty dollars. And welcome from Hartsdale, New York, Arthur Weinfeld. And I did some soap operas back in the day. And then I decided um, this takes up too much time. You know, when you do when you do commercials or any kind of voice acting, you're there maybe well, for a commercial. You're there maybe an hour. A lot of times you're there 15 minutes, and then you go somewhere else and do something else. 
when you're on camera, either for a film or a TV show or whatever, uh, you're usually there like seven in the morning. Oh, wow. And you're reading the newspaper while the girls get their curlers in their hair. This is it's true. And um, while they're getting the cameras warmed up and all that. Then you'll do a, a read through to the table. And maybe um, uh, then you do a walk through. My point is, you're there from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. sometimes. Right. And, and most of that is sitting around and waiting. And that's something I don't like. Should we be making it easy for Lionel to shirk unpleasant duties? So voice acting, it's more streamlined. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. So it was like, what is it, like a four hour, five hour, something like that? Like it depends on what you're doing. We recorded a full episode of Thundercats. It would take us um, three hours. Wow. Maybe. Wow. Because we did two in one day. We worked. We worked. Uh, we worked once a month, two days, a Thursday and a Friday, and we did four shows in those two days. Wow. That's that's efficient. I mean. Yeah, you banged them right out. Wow. And then after a while, if you do, you do thirteen of them or whatever, uh, and and. Um, a lot of people ask me, why, uh, why don't you just record them all? Because, well, when you first start out, you don't know if it's going to go on the air or not. In fact, you have to record 13 of them to even pre present it to a network to get them to buy it. Then once they buy them, put them on the air, now you've got to write a whole new one. You've got to animate the whole new one. You know, so that's why it takes so long. It took us about three and a half years to do all the Thundercats. Wow. What, um, when, when you got into Thundercats, like, um, did you audition for it? Mm -hmm. Were you contacted to do it? Yeah, audition. Okay. Mm -hmm. when, um, when, you got, when they put all you guys together. Let's go, Thundercats! We all, there are only six of us in the cast. Right. And, uh, so you guys had to like, play offense and defense. Kind played of hundreds of characters. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah play hundreds of characters. Good guys and bad guys. Did they, did they have that lined up when they cast you? Like, did they say, okay, you're going to be Thunder, you're going to be a lion and you're going to be Jackal? When they announced, when, when we did the auditions? Mm -hmm. uh, no, at the auditions, they, as I recall, uh, I got there and you walk in, the room is all covered with uh, uh, illustrations of the characters and, and a synopses of, uh, of what they're like, what the show's about, and things like that. And then they ask you to pick two characters that you want to audition for. Uh, one, uh, one Thundercat and one Mutant, we call them. So I said, well, I'll audition for Lionel and Jackal Man. And I, fortunately, I, I got those too. And then beyond that, when new characters came in, came in while you were at the recording session, then they would say, okay, you, you do this voice, you do that. When you when you approached Lionel, uh, like obviously with Jackal Man, it was like, well, he's a jackal. Yeah. They're they're laughy, they're you know wheezy. Yeah. So you kind of gave him that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And but with, with Lionel, I mean, obviously he's like, oh, I'm not going to make him sound like a lion, but like, what? How did no. you approach that character? Lionel was just my voice, really. If you think about it, all of the the Thundercats, Lionel, Chitara, Tigra, who am I leaving out? <laughs> they uh, like they weren't like character voices. They were just our voices. Okay. Well, I shouldn't say all of this because. Uh, so Tiger, like Peter Newman sounds course. like Tiger. Like yeah. Like that's just how he's like you know, ordering a pizza. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. And and my voice on Thundercats is, is the same voice I'm using right now. The difference is when I talk to you, I say Sword of Omens come to my hand. I lie low, commend it. On TV, it comes out Sword of Omens come to my hand. I lie low, <laughs> commend it. <laughs> So it's a little more dramatic, but it's still my voice. Yep. It's more pointed. It's more like like yeah. bombastic. Mm -hmm. That's that's one that's thing. A good that, word. Bombastic. That, that's a five dollar word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's the thing that I remember about that show growing up is how how dramatic it was mm -hmm. uh, for a little kid to watch that. Everything was yeah. very tense. Mm -hmm. um, when when a character would say something, it was like you know. Ah, and, and it was important. Yeah. Um, as opposed to somewhere, it was just like and kind of lackadaisical, like, yeah. like and that that pounding score, of that whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> the music was great, wasn't it? Um, it, it? It painted this like serious kind of picture, even yeah. though it was, um, you know, very fantastical. How has the landscape changed in voice acting over the years? Um, is there more competition now? Is there less competition? For voice acting in general, like when you go to an audition, are there more voice actors out there? Are there less? Uh, Is it easier now than it was in 1985. Yes, I, I don't know how to answer that because I don't know if there are more or fewer people. Uh, there are fewer opportunities. There are fewer commercials being made. There are few, fewer. Yeah, 
fewer of the commercials being made. And there's more. And, uh, and now there's a lot more non-union uh, work too. That was one of my Any, other questions. You can go on the internet right now and look up. We're looking for voice actors, you know, for a dollar a day, etc. And you'd be surprised how many people jump jump to do it. Right. Uh, but of course, that's that's not network stuff. That's just some local bank maybe wants to do a commercial. You know. How do you feel the um, like Hollywood actors getting into animated features and things like that? How well, do you think it that affects? Pissed me off at first. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, the funny thing is, up until very recently, twenty years or so. Um, big actors, name actors, would not do commercials. It was beneath them. Oh, huh. yeah. No, I don't. I don't do commercials. The funny part of it is, every one of them had done commercials until they got a better, you know, what they considered a better job. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Frank Sinatra. Nobody knows this here in this country, but Frank Sinatra for years did commercials for Cadillac, I think, maybe Lincoln, that could only be shown in Japan. Overseas, yeah. Because he didn't want the people in America to think he needed the money. Yeah, I think that's still a thing. I think like George Clooney does like Seiko watch mm -hmm. ads in Japan. Yeah. Where it's like totally okay, or Brad Pitt or mm -hmm. one of those guys, they won't do them here. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. I never, I, but but, but I, like I said, I was kind of upset me at first, but I figured you know, they're, <laughs> they're, they're actors too, and if, you know, if they can do it, they should do it. 90 seconds to breakfast. How does it make you feel that these characters that you helped create have become kind of immortalized? Um, you know, that, I mean, my kids and my grandkids are yeah. going to be seeing Thundercats. Who would, who would have known it, right? I right. never had any idea that 40 years later, you know, I'd be sitting around talking to people about <laughs> Thundercats. It, it's fantastic. And I, I love the fact that the generations, you know, uh, these Comic Cons, guys bring their kids, their grandkids. You know, uh, so, so I like that about the fact that Thundercats not just appealed to, to all audiences, but uh, was good for all audiences. I think. Absolutely. We just we uh, we just did a panel of about an hour ago, and there was a what a twelve year old boy roughly, and it was about uh, robots from the eighties and mm. Transformers and things like that. That kid knew more than yeah. half the men that were yeah, in that audience, sure. and uh, it well, blew me away. That's another thing now with uh, technology, with the advent of the internet and YouTube and videotape, and now you know DVDs and stuff. Um, those things are available everywhere, even things from forty years ago. You know, when Thundercats was on first, it was on, each show was on once. At one, one, you know, not on all night long, and then recast, you know, or then the next day. Um, so, it's a lot better now because people can have more of a variety to choose from. Definitely. Um, what character that you've done in your career has posed the biggest vocal challenge for you? Vocal challenge, like the the one that's the hardest on your voice. Uh, ah, I good asked uh, Alan Oppenheimer uh, yeah. when I met him years ago, uh, and he was like, "Oh, Skeletor, it just it, it yeah. shreds yeah. his voice, and he almost won't even do it." Um, yeah, when people meet him. Yeah, I know. I, I've, I've heard him say he'd rather not do it. Yeah. But sometimes his throat's not good. Yeah. Uh, I, the hardest one in terms of, of affecting my voice, I think it's probably Sunny and Coco Plus. Roger. Up here at 30,000 feet, those kids can't make me go cuckoo for the yummy, chocolatey taste of Cocoa Puffs, the delicious part of this complete breakfast. Because it's, it's all up here, you know, and it's <laughs> very, very hyper. Yahoo! That's like, it's like straight out of the nose. It's just like... <laughs> it's uh, from everything. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so, so it, I mean, it's, <laughs> it doesn't hurt or anything, but by the end of the day, I sound like this. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm hoarse here. This is harder on my voice than sitting in a loud place, talking across the table to people because I have to, you know, you know, you have to talk loudly. Um, but uh, the sunny thing would be, as you said, the most most effective on my voice. At the end of the day, I probably am very hoarse for the rest of the night, but then it comes back to me. Definitely, I know uh, I do a pretty good um, uh, Earl Hammond. Uh, ah. And uh, the Mons Mar and Mumra, Mumra yeah. uh, his his little monologue that he does whenever he transforms. Let's hear it. And <laughs> Come on. I was doing it for uh, Kyle earlier. He was like, "Whoa, uh, Moon Star of Limbo, give me the might, the muscle." Um, but if I do that too many times, it's oh yeah, oh, like, yeah. I, mean, Earl I sound like a constantly drinking uh, Earl Hammond. Who's it? Yeah. 
constantly drinking hot tea with uh, lemon and honey. Because he would, like you said, he would do ancient spirits of evil. Transform! Like it came from his, you know, just from the, the pit of somewhere, yeah. like, rah, and, and The funny thing terrifying. about Earl was, uh, you know how Mumra, uh, the Mumra character, when he's doing all that, the uh, stuff spit. comes out of his, the spit and saliva comes out of his mouth. Earl did that when he talked, when he did that <laughs> character. Wow. He'd be going, ancient spirits, and we'd all go. <laughs> and about every third well, line. the raincoat. <laughs> Gallagher. Wow. About every third line, he'd go. <laughs> Transform. So that kind of plays into what you're saying about like having the, the you know the hand motions and like getting into it. Every actor has their own their own thing, you know. I, I, I read it or I listened to a podcast and somebody was talking about Frank Welker and how he he yeah. was doing a voice and he was bent over and and like he was you know like yeah. a, about to play a football game or yeah. something and he yeah. had to do that to get it uh -huh. you know, the the voice that he he was creating yeah. and uh, that was fascinating. To like, bah, like contort just to, yeah. to get that There's out. There's no one way to do it. It's just whatever, however you feel more comfortable. Right. Which is another, which is an advantage you have in voice acting that you don't have on camera, is that you can, can you can do crazy things like, like that to get the voice you want. Where on camera you wouldn't be able to right. do that. Yeah, you'd be like, oh, what's this guy doing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Knowing what you know now, uh, at this point in your career, what would be a piece of advice that you'd love to give your younger self just starting out? Wow. Well, I started See, out. I so promise young. no hard hitting questions, and here they are. <laughs> <laughs> well, I started out so young in the business. I was 15 years old when I started in radio. Really? That's right. I, I heard that on yeah. the uh, Yeah. So, and at that age, you know, it just seemed natural. Everybody does that. I got a, oh, I got a radio show. Okay, I got this. Now I, now I got a TV show, and I got that. So there was for me, there was no, like for a lot of people, trying so hard for a long time to get in the business, you know, and, and I didn't have to do that. Uh, I mean, I did it, but I was growing up at the time. You know what I'm saying? I could afford to not get job, job after job after job because I'm still in high school. You know? The Mirage isn't yours to sell. It's Silverhawk's property. Is there a character in, whether it's movies or, or animation or anything, um, past or present, that you would love to play? Oh, gosh, that's a good question. It's a tough question. Um, I can't really think of any character. Uh, I've, always, I've, I've always thought it would be fun to do a film, uh, maybe a Western or something like that. Something really different because I've never done anything that's really far out there, like a genre piece, like a like a yeah. you know. And, yeah. yeah. The, the closest to that I've gotten is it's just recent. I started doing video games. Mm -hmm. And uh, is it Red Dead Redemption? Red Dead Redemption too. Yeah, I played J.B. Cripps. How do you get on with Clay Davies? Horrible little wretch, in my opinion. And that was that was acting because you were on camera. They put this suit on you of uh, spandex. And they have little, they, they stick things all over it. Oh, the little motion sensor Motion balls. detectors, yeah. And then you've got a helmet on with um, a thing that comes out like this and down like that. It has a camera in it and a bright light. And that's how you have to act with that in your face. Wow. So kind of like a Lord of the Rings with the, the motion capture. I, yeah, I guess so, yeah. Um, so that's not just you giving the voice. That's you doing everything. It's my, when you, when you see the, on the video game, you see J.B. Cripps walking around. That's, I can actually recognize my walk when I see it because that's me. But somehow the computers take me and put the, put the costume on it and put J.B. Cripps' face on it. But every facial movement is mine because before you start doing it, they call it motion capture, mocap. Before you even go into the studio, you spend about a half an hour in an ante room where a guy with a camera is saying, okay, smile as big as you can. Frown, <laughs> wink one eye, wink the other hand, and then move your left leg. They have you do every movement that you, you know somebody would probably do in a in life, hmm. and then the computer learns that. So when it comes time for me to do this, the computer knows how I do that. It's crazy. Wow, that's that's pretty cool. In fact, when you're when you're actually filming, you can uh, look up at the monitors mm -hmm. and see yourself standing there in costume. 
with with Cripps's face. Oh, I can dude. wave. I can go like this, and it waves back to me. It's me waving back at me. It's, that's surreal. It is. <laughs> but that's. I mean, that's full on acting. I mean, it's, it's just you're, yeah. you're you're almost like animated over. Yeah. But you're doing. I mean, ninety five percent of the. the the performance. Yeah, you're doing everything, all the movements, everything else. You have to, you know, hmm. uh, walk over here, get on a horse. The horse, by the way, was a, uh, a barrel, an old oil barrel with a little tail on the back of it and a saddle. <laughs> you handsome genius. <laughs> so how about it? Are you in? If you hadn't become a voice actor, what would you have chosen to do? Mm, good. Again, I started so young, I hadn't thought about anything else, you know. And I have no other skills that I know of. I've never had to try anything else. But I think I would like to have been a, a pro baseball player. Love baseball. Uh, at one point, I wanted to be a... Uh, uh, I don't know why, but when I was about 10 years old, I decided I was going to be, become an um, interpreter at the United Nations. I let go of that pretty quick. <laughs> but, uh, that is, yeah, that I think that'd be a neat job. For a kid. <laughs> yeah. Wow. You'd be the only one that knows what they're really saying to each other. <laughs> that's that's a powerful position. <laughs> wow. Well, Larry, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate the uh, the opportunity. Fun. Thank you. It's been awesome. It's been uh, fun. This is one of those things I've wanted to do for you know years and years. Now you've done it. Yeah.